so uh, hello everyone uh, this is our uh, first lecture uh, for this uh, lockdown period and we are going to start off with the uh, characterization technique uh, uh, the syllabus that i am going to cover includes uh, both uh, unit 4 and unit uh, 5 so initially we are going to have a very uh, small introduction to the topic uh, but before i begin with that i would just like to give you a brief about the google classroom that uh, we are gonna use so uh, uh, as i have already informed you that you should uh, install this uh, google classroom here and uh, if if i can show it to you this is your google classroom and once you install this google classroom you can basically open it uh, the app is uh, very much uh, efficient uh, and then you can check for your classroom uh, so basically i'm taking up your characterization technique and as you can see uh, there are only 11 students uh, some of you have not yet registered till now three of you please uh, try to do that at the earliest uh, so uh, if we open this uh, google classroom here we are uh, going to go into the characterization technique and uh, uh, yesterday uh, i have uh, uploaded a video which is uh, not a new video it's actually an old video but i've told you to go through this uh, and this will also be uh, applicable for your examination purposes please take a note of this so whatever instruction i'm providing you there please try to uh, stick to that instruction okay so uh, if you open this video uh, you you basically can open this uh, uh, youtube video and if you just check it once uh, uh, there are a lot of informations uh, available but if we just go to somewhere in the middle uh, i have uh, here Solid talked about physics, uh, uh, more about electromagnetic waves let's go further so if we just go somewhere um, somewhere in the fifth or the sixth minute yeah from this you basically get some idea so the moral of uh, giving you this video to study is to understand the importance of so based on this let's just uh, go to the uh, lecture for today and uh, in today's lecture what we're going to do is uh, we are going to uh, study about uh, characterization techniques and for this uh, we are going to start with this and uh, the first uh, uh, i'd like to tell you that uh, why and how we actually characterize uh, materials and that's the introductory part and uh, uh, the characterization is forming a very important part of uh, material science so if you basically have uh, any kind of material and you want to study its uh, properties you have to carry out certain uh, scientific experiments on it and that experiment uh, is basically something which we'll talk about uh, uh, that experiment will actually give you a lot of information about the material so in material science uh, the general purpose is uh, uh, the material structure and the properties are uh, probed uh, and measured uh, by knowing this uh, general process now we do this characterization in order to have a proper scientific understanding of the material now uh, there are uh, some definitions and sometimes it's true sometimes the other definition might sound true but both of them at uh, some point uh, makes sense so uh, we basically use uh, terms like uh, 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 for characterization it means that it's technique which studies the microstru microscopic structure and properties of the material now that is valid but uh, sometimes we also come across another definition this particular definition where it is said uh, it uses the terms to refer to any material analysis process uh, including uh, analysis process and then there we can do some mechanical testing or thermal analysis or even density calculation so that also comes under the material characterization uh, property uh, then i'd like to tell you that the scale of the structure that are uh, being uh, observed in material characterization uh, ranges uh, from angstrom so uh, if we have individual atoms and chemical bonds we are actually studying the material in the angstrom range and if you're going for a centimeter which is obviously a larger scale we are actually going to study the coarse grain structure in metals so basically we are going to have a, a view or a structural view of the material 
so uh, what happens uh, is uh, if we just uh, go into this uh, image here if we just go into this image here uh, if you just look here we basically have the uh, size mentioned here it's 10 nanometer it's 10 micrometer and it's 10 millimeter okay so if we have that uh, we can actually based on the size of the material that actually we want to characterize we can actually have a uh, uh, different types of characterization technique now if you have got a very small material in the nanometer range we can use stem we can use fesem to study it if we have a larger sample we can actually use fm to probe uh, the material that's atomic force microscopy tm is tunneling electron microscopy fesem is field electron scanning electron microscopy field emission scanning electron microscopy is your fesem so we have uh, a larger uh, structure let's say in the range of uh, micrometer then we can actually use uh, sam here which is uh, scanning electron microscopy we also have something which is called the profilometry which we can use uh, we are not going to go into details of each and every technique but we are definitely going to see tem sam afm and of course some optical properties now something optical in nature i think you've already studied it before uh, when you were in your uh, class 11 12 you might have if, if you have attended your biology practical classes might be you studied the structure of the leaves and all and you've used some kind of optical microscope there now the material that you are actually studying under that microscope will lie in the millimeter range and that is what is used uh, to do the optical studies but if we are using so in these kind of studies you are basically using light as a source but if you come at a lower scale of let's say micrometer range you are going to use electrons or other uh, sources and not light is the exact source so that's how it uh, works here so uh, there are many characterization techniques uh, which has been practiced uh, for ages like uh, the basic uh, optical microscopy now, optical microscopy is very common as i've already told you you've already done it you might have seen an optical microscope where you have uh, uh, something like a 10x zoom okay 10x zoom it's written or 20x or 50x and then you can go further into the system but if you still want to go further you cannot really use a technique like an optical microscope so there are two techniques and methods which are actually constantly emerging uh, now with the advent of electron microscope where electron is the source we have the electron microscope the secondary ion mass spectrometry is also there and this has been found in the 20th century and actually has reversalized the field of characterization now we also have uh, this also basically allows imaging and analysis of structures and composition of much smaller scales it leads to a huge increase in the level of understanding uh, as to why different materials show different properties and behavior so in order to know a uh, material why does it behave that way we have to understand the internal structure and these kind of techniques like electron microscopy and secondary ion mass spectroscopy will basically give you that kind of idea we have the atomic force microscopy which is more recent compared to the electron microscopy and it has explored a number of samples in the last uh, 30 years there are different modes of using the atomic force microscopy uh, we are going to see that in the future classes so so let's look into this uh, table uh, this is quite simple now we have something which is called the scale so let's say we have got uh, one x zoom so that means the material which is visible to your naked eye what kind of uh, common technique that you can use first you can do a visual inspection to look if there is any uh, burn on that or any crack on that then you can do an x-ray radiography and then you can do an ultrasonic inspection ultrasonic inspection is a very simple technique to know if there are any cracks or inclusions there uh, we can actually find out what are the product defects and all now if we go into a, a mesostructure okay as to mesostructure uh, we need to actually uh, look into the common techniques which are used are optical microscopy scanning electron microscopy and we can actually see the grain property and sizes and also the phase morphology and anisotropy okay so uh, the magnification that is needed here is 10 to the power 2 so we need to go deep into this and if you remember your normal optical microscope uh, mostly it's 50x 100x so that's only 10 to the power 1 typical uh, uh, standard uh, optical microscope now if you go further deep into the system let's zoom into it in 10 to the power 4 and then we can actually uh, use tools like uh, 
scanning transmission director microscopy and atomic force uh, microscopy and the characterization that can be done is dislocation substructure grain and phase boundaries and precipitation phenomena these are all technical terms simple terms if you are interested you can google it or we will come into these terms in the near future now if we want to zoom in further let's zoom in further if you go into 10 to the power 6 range so we are going into a magnification of 10 to the power 6 obviously we cannot use visible light we have got other sources and let's say we are using something like x-ray so we have got the x-ray diffraction technique but we definitely have hrtm hrtm is a very important tool if you are studying nanomaterial and then we have got the scanning interleading microscopy and then from there we can actually study about the crystal and the interference structure now if you have gone through your solid state physics uh, in your uh, schools in basically you can say solid state chemistry a bit and when you did done your bsc or when you've uh, uh, done your uh, 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 basic uh, course on uh, um, solid state physics you must have studied about the crystal structure so you want to know the crystal structure these are the techniques that we can definitely use where x-ray diffraction is one of the most prominent uh, confirming technique from there we can actually find out what are the point effects and point effect clusters if you don't have much idea on this please leave a comment i'll try to explain this giving you some more uh, videos on this so if you go into the microscopic part um, uh, the characterization techniques which probe and map are the surface and the subsurface structure of the material so if you want to know about the surface of the material we can actually use some kind of microscopy technique and these techniques uh, will basically not use visible light they will use either proton as a source, electron as a source, ion as a source or physical cantilever probes. Now this physical cantilever probe is something which is valid for AFM. So this is valid for AFM and we know electron, photons, electron is electron microscopy, ions can be used, photons can be used. We have got nuclear spectroscopy and so on. Okay, So we are going to see some more techniques in the later slides. So what does this give me? This gives me uh, more data about the sample structure and it depends basically on the length scale that we are talking about. So if we want to go deep into the system, we have to use different sources. Which sources acts when? We can see it in the near future classes. So some of the important and the common uh, microscopic techniques are the optical microscope, the scanning electron microscope, the tunneling electron microscope, field ion microscope. This definitely use ion as a source. This uses electron, this uses electron. Optical microscope is used as light, right? Scanning tunneling microscope, we have got the scanning probe microscopy, atomic force microscopy, that is where the tapping mode and all these things will come up, contact mode, tapping mode and so on. And we have got the X-ray diffraction topography. So these are some of the techniques. Uh, we also have some more techniques in spectroscopy. Now this spectroscopy, that was previously it was microscopy, here it is spectroscopy. Now this group of technique uses a range of principles to reveal the chemical composition. Now you have a material, you want to know everything about it. So definitely the chemical composition is very important. You can also know about the composition variation. That means what percentage of what chemical is involved in that particular material. We can definitely know the solid state part and know the crystal structure. And then we can also know the photoelectric property of the material. So if you have a material which you are which uh, interests you in something like let's say a photoelectric effect or how does it behave when light or photons falls on it uh, then you can uh, explore these kind of properties now, the instrument which are used for studying these properties include uh, the optical uh, radiation we have got the ultraviolet uh, spectroscopy we have got the Fourier transform spectroscopy thermoluminescence and photoluminescence we are going to talk about uh, infrared spectroscopy, UV spectroscopy in the near future classes because that is also a part of our syllabus. Now if you look into X-rays, we already know the application of X-ray in order to detect uh, uh, cracks and then if you have any damage in your bones, that also can be found out uh, using X-rays because uh, um, X-ray uh, is, 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 is something which is very common in uh, medical use. But uh, in material characterization, X-ray plays a very important role. And if we use X-rays as a source, there are different techniques like X-ray diffraction, small angle X-ray scattering, energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, wavelength dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, electron energy loss spectroscopy. Please note these techniques are there. It might or might not be easily available. As for your syllabus and for your knowledge, you already have an X-ray diffraction machine in our lab. 
in the near future when the classes restarts we are going to definitely look into that machine uh, and and going to look into the uh, important aspects and parts of that uh, instrument uh, but some all these instruments are not that easily available you have to procure uh, or uh, at a very high cost or else you have to take some um, help from different institute based on uh, payment basis or you basically have to wait for your turn we also have ogre electron spectroscopy we have got the correlation spectroscopy we have got mass spectroscopy energy ionization thermal mass spectrometer and secondary ion mass spectrometer the last three basically are modes of uh, spectroscopy in a different way not using the x-rays okay so we are going to go into the details later and then comes the nuclear spectroscopy well nuclear spectroscopy is something which is uh, is is also uh, common in fact this nmr is something which is very much applicable in the field of chemistry in order to know more about a material so that's a nuclear magnetic resonance uh, spectroscopy we have got the mosebius spectroscopy and the perturbed angular correlation there are also some more other cold uh, spectroscopic techniques and which deals with uh, uh, light as a source of dynamic light scattering DLS which basically can give you an idea about the particle size we have got the terahertz spectroscopy we are using some kind of frequency range there we have got the electron paramagnetic or spin resonance spectroscopy we are going to explore the spin property of the electron to look into the material and then we have got small angle neutron scattering we are going to use neutron as a source that's also a part of uh, nuclear spectroscopy and then definitely Rutherford backscattering spectrometer I think you all have heard about it in your lower classes so there are also some more uh, techniques which are macroscopic in nature so if you want to look into the superficial properties of the material and the mechanical property of the material you can basically use this macroscopic technique and basically it will give an idea about the tensile compressive or torsional creep fatigue toughness and hardness testing so uh, some of the more techniques which actually talks about the uh, macroscopic uh, testing are differential thermal analysis it will basically talk about your uh, phases and all uh, for a material which actually uh, behaves differently when the temperature is increased something is similar studied in dielectric thermal analysis or thermogravimetric analysis also we also have differential scanning calorimetry all of them are actually temperature based uh, studies then we have got impulsive excitation technique and then there are some ultrasound techniques uh, uh, like resonant ultrasound spectroscopy and time domain ultrasonic uh, testing methods so that's the end uh, for today's uh, lecture uh, here I just wanted to tell you that uh, we have so many experimental techniques and characterization techniques so in the near future if you're doing your research you have to identify what kind of technique is appropriate for uh, your material but for now we are going to include in this syllabus some of the most common characterization techniques which more or less you'll be using in the near future that's all for today thank you